Hey, this is Wolf from Armory Train. And in some of the comments I've been receiving, people are saying they like what I make, but what I'm making, I use all my high-tech tools, like my laser engraver, 3D printers, scroll saws, band saws, you know, cordless glue guns, even my belt sander. So today I'm going to make a project without using any of the special tools. I'm not even going to use my Dremel. What we're going to do is make scabbards for LARP swords. Because most people at LARP, when they're running around with their hundred plus dollar swords, they just stick them through their belt. Or maybe they've got a sword frog they'll wear it in, which is slightly better. Or some of them just have rings, you know, to hang them off the belt. And all of this leaves an exposed sword, which, while it's shiny and pretty, gets chopped up and damaged and beat up. So to protect these swords, we're going to make a full scabbard. Now what we're going to use is some 3 mil core flute. I've just had to buy a new sheet of it because all the core flute I had was in little pieces running the wrong way. Now, with the core flute, it is corrugated like cardboard is, and we need to cut it lengthways along the corrugation so we can then bend it to form the sword scabbards or sheaths. In addition to the core flute, I'll be using a little bit of brown felt to line it with, some kangaroo leather to cover the outside, although you could use vinyl or pleather or even some canvas or linen, anything you'd like really to line the outside. Tool-wise, I'm using a knife, diamond file to sharpen the knife, marker pen to draw it all out with, some gaff tape to hold it together, some scissors, fabric scissors and everything else scissors, and some tacky glue. The only other tool I'm using is, of course, the Pepsi Max because I'm addicted to this horrible stuff and I can't build without it. So my next step is to cut pieces of core flute a little bit wider than the sword blade and I'll show you what we do after that. Okay, so what you need to do is measure your sword blade and then make a strip of core flute with the ridges running along it about two centimeters wider than your sword blade. Yes, my sword has grown. I'm building three of these at the same time. So you may see different swords during the video. Okay. Next, grab your knife and reduce the blade size to one of the smaller settings. And then what you're going to be doing is cutting only one side of the core flute. Not all the way through, just one side. So you can roll it like this so it fits around the sword blade like so. The next step is with the gaff tape. Grab the gaff tape and on the inside of the curve tape it into the right size. Now after some careful consideration on how I'm making this I've decided I'm going to use a little bit of floor tile too and glue it into the bottom of the scabbard. I'm going to use that so that it's a nice square end, I don't have to worry about tapering it or doing any other silly things. So now that I've got this side done, I grab my trusty felt, doesn't matter what colour it is, but you know, naturalistic colours work better sometimes. And what I'm going to do is cut a piece that'll fit inside this, hanging one inch over the top. So I can fold it over, and the sword won't get caught on the core flute as it comes in and out. So I'm going to do that now on both of these pieces and I'll show you how to attach them together. I now have the curved pieces of core flute with the felt glued in. This is the top. The felt's been bent over and then taped down. Don't worry, you won't see any of this tape when we're done. And at the bottom it just has a little bit of extra tape. So what you need to do now is to grab the sword that you're going to make the scabbard for, which is this one, put both pieces together, making sure that you've got the correct end, and then we're going to put gaff tape 
around it in a couple of places and then run gaff tape down the edges to hold it together. Now on this end we're going to use some EVA formatting and we're just going to cut a piece the right size to insert into that and glue it in before we tape it. So I'm going to tape it up and show you how pretty it all looks. Okay, so here we have a core flute scabbard on the sword. It's a scabbard instead of a sheath because as far as I understand it, a sheath is a soft floppy cover and a scabbard is a hard cover normally made out of wood but we're LARPers so core flute will do. Now the sword does have a little bit of wiggle in it but it'll settle down over time and it draws out quite nicely. As you can see the felt goes over the end and eventually um, as you lubricate the sword blades with the silicon spray which you should do after every combat because otherwise the, the latex dries out and cracks the silicon spray will also get caught in the felt which means every time you put your sword away you'll be lubricating the outside so it doesn't dry out you still need to do the cross guard and pommel though so this is effectively finished I mean, it looks ugly as hell, but, you know, if you were just at a boffle up, you might get away with it. What I'm going to do is cover it in some kangaroo leather. Now, you could, as I said earlier, you could use pleather, or you could use vinyl, or you could use material. Pretty much anything you like. It's your sword cover, but I've got access to cheap kangaroo hide, so that's what I'm going to use. And I'll put it on. And then I'll show you the transformation of how good the sword can look. Hi guys, I've finished two of the three swords. The third sword is a silly elf blade with weird ass curves that will not go into one of these scabbards. I'm probably going to make a soft sheath for it. Or convince the owner to sell it to some other poor sap and buy a proper sword. <laughs> because this is just silly. Also it's elvish. Which equals silly. Okay. The actual swords. We have this one. On I couldn't use kangaroo. My hides weren't quite big enough. They were an inch too small. So I've used a bovine split instead. That's a cow for uneducated people. Now onto this one I've glued a ring of belting leather. And that's so uh, the sword frog that it's sitting in, which is incredibly tight at the moment, so it's not going because oh, it's caught on the back of it. It's not going anywhere anyway. So it'll sit on a belt and it can be drawn and used, you know, wavy, 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 hitty, 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 and put back. Now, for people my size, I could also hang one of these on my belt. So once we work out who it's going on, this top ring will be attached probably with a Chicago screw hanging off a ring of a baldric. And then off this metal D ring, we'll hang a second strap to hold it on the right angle. And this sword also comes out quite easily and goes away. So, for LARP, these are great. For a real sword, they're kind of ugly. But let me know whether you could use these in your LARPs in Europe and America. Um, I hope you found some use in these videos and that you'll protect your latex swords better from now on and this is Wolf from Armory Train saying go out and make something